So a same-sex couple married in Connecticut over a year ago may be separated, and it's not because of a failing marriage, but because of our federal government. Josh Vanderveer is a Colorado-born Harvard grad who's currently part of the writing seminar faculty at Princeton, and Henry Valandia is a Venezuelan-born professional dance teacher, also a small business owner, and they join me in studio now to talk about what they're facing. Uh, gentlemen, it's good to have you here. I appreciate your time and also uh, your uh, willingness to share your story. Uh, Josh, I want to start with you. Uh, what is the situation right now in what you face for Henry's possible deportation? Mm -hmm. Well, Henry faces a deportation hearing May 6th, so a little over a week from now. The reason he's being deported, he's from Venezuela, we're a same-sex couple, we got married last year, and yet the federal government does not recognize our marriage. So in the immigration context, it means the federal government comes into my home and rips my husband away from me. Uh, Henry, for you, when you came here in 2002 from Venezuela uh, and you came on a visitor's visa, uh, did you think then that you wanted to stay, that you wanted to become a, a green-carded citizen here in the U.S.? And what steps did you take at that point to do it on your own? Well, like um, every other person comes to America, you are facing, you know, the American dream, right? right. So, um, what I wasn't expecting is to fall in love and with uh, Josh, who is mother half. And what it's uh, really uh, sad is that the only reason why I'm facing deportation right now is because I'm gay, and the you know, I'm only one is other cop and. Um, the government recognizes our marriage like many other couples in America who simply can sponsor their spouses, which is basic American citizens' right. Uh, Josh, when you got married in Connecticut, obviously a state that recognizes your right to be married, did you know then that federally you were going to have this hurdle to face? Yeah, I mean, this law, the Defense of Marriage Act, it exists, and I knew that it existed and that the federal government would not recognize my marriage and I wouldn't be able to sponsor Henry. But I think that's wrong and unjust. And the issue for us is that May 6th, Henry could be ripped away from me, but that doesn't have to happen. Secretary Napolitano of Homeland Security could stop mm -hmm. the deportations of spouses like Henry, my husband, and all the thousands of same-sex couples like us. She could stop those deportations right now. Uh, and that's what we need her to do. I just wanted to point out to everybody, according to Immigration Equality, a group that's following uh, the binational issue right now in our country, uh, it's saying that 35,000 gay couples are affected by this. 47% of those couples have kids. Uh, so this really is ripping at the fabric of families uh, in our country right now. Uh, as I understand it, the United States Citizen and Immigration Services uh, announced, even after Obama said that DOMA was unconstitutional, uh, that deportation hearings would continue. So when President Obama came out and said that they felt that DOMA was unconstitutional. Henry, did you think that that was going to be an end to all of this and you, would have, you wouldn't have to face the potential for deportation? Well, it certainly brings hope to couples like us um, and it, it gives some hope, but then we saw how they keep uh, constantly deporting people, couples, which is completely uh, unconstitutional to deport people. What's the need to deport uh, families, three part, families apart? Um, and I just another part of a movement, uh, and you can find information and stop the petitions that come, where follows couples like us who are facing this nightmare. Uh, Josh, did you think that uh, you know DOMA was instituted in 1996? Obviously, you were a lot younger back then. Uh, but did you feel that you would always get married one day? And did you feel? Because uh, I know that you feel this is a violation of your rights as a as an American. But uh, I guess you felt that you had hopeful hopefulness enough. Uh, that you were able to find someone that you fell in love with. You did go ahead and get married. So how does this affect your day in and day out marriage, uh, having to worry about this looming over your heads all the time? I mean, it's incredibly frightening. I mean, Henry's my other half. He's the person I want to spend my life with. That's why I married him. And that's, as an American, what I always expected I'd be able to do. Marry whomever I want. If that person's from another country, that person stays with me here in this country for the rest of our lives. And I can't believe that this is happening, that my husband is being deported when Napolitano, when this administration could step in and stop it immediately. I was a Harvard undergrad in 2003 mm -hmm. when marriages started in Massachusetts. So it's something that I've grown up expecting. Marry whom you love and then have them stay here with you in this country. Well, we wish you the best of luck. We'll continue to follow your story. I think you do provide a lot of hope for other LGBT couples out there. Certainly uh, a lot of kids who are going to see your story and know that they could have hope for a, a pretty bright future themselves. So, gentlemen, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas.